Hi, I'm Kang uh, from University of Georgia. Uh, this is a joint work uh, with uh, Qi Xue and De Yue Zhang from Qihu 360, and also Wei Lin uh, from University of Virginia. Uh, notice that we have four authors, and there's a picture of uh, its four uh, you know, docs. There's no correlation. It's just one example I'm going to use. Uh, so uh, I feel like I'm an outlier uh, for this conference because we don't have any of the equation or mathematics. Uh, we don't have any of the, uh, uh, we, we're not applying any of the adversary machine learning effort. So uh, I decided to just you know, tell you the story, how we get into this problem, then what was our findings. So the, the reason we started looking at the deep learning uh, application, the, the implementation issue is because uh, in, uh, last year I looked at the uh, uh, news, and, and uh, this is uh, news in Chinese, and I copied the text there, and also I put the translation. This is an example of applying AI in a classroom setting. So what they do is they use face recognition to check uh, first uh, you know, whether you attend the, the class or uh, whether you may get someone replace you to attend the class or whether you even pay attention. So when I read this, I, I, I started to remember like my student time. You know, I feel like if I was a student, I probably want to play against this, right? So that's how we start to look at this. Now, of course, we don't have the, uh, the code and implementation of those uh, systems. So the f very first thing we start to look at is the, uh, the sample application that you can just download with uh, all these popular uh, deep learning frameworks. So the, the example here I use is the cafe example. So you can actually download the cafe, and they have the sample implementation. You can even get the, uh, uh, the, the image net data, the well-trained model. So the example I put here is the sample application come with cafe, and you can put the image uh, into it, and uh, you don't even need to train. You can just get other people's training you know, model there. And we actually use the model we download from Berkeley's lab, and we run it. And the result of, uh, like, you know, if you gave image like this, it will tell you what kind of cat it has. Uh, you know. So it, for us, it's pretty good accuracy, okay? So I'm gonna first show you the result we can achieve, then uh, I'll explain uh, what we find. So this is a, the early photo I showed to you, and this is actually four photos. The, the top left one are, uh, it's one of the photo I, I grabbed from the internet, uh, because it's like a bulldog, uh, uh, the, like University of Georgia's, uh, you know, the, the, the icon they use, so, you know, they like to use bulldog. Notice there are three other figures. If you look at it closely, I think you notice there's some uh, you know, difference from the original one. But I want to uh, remind you that we're not doing adversary machine learning. We are, we're not really uh, modifying the, the, the texture part. The reason you see some differences is because we modified the metadata of this, these pictures and we insert our like, shell code, in, in, you know, some malicious code in the picture. As a result, it uh, affects the display of the picture, but we are not doing any of the adversary machine learning here, okay? So if I throw this full picture to the, uh, the cafe example with the Berkeley uh, model and the ImageNet data, and these are the results. I, I don't imagine you raise a small text, so I'm gonna explain the four pictures output. The very beginning, you know, of course, you know, it's Budok and actually ImageNet application, uh, recognize this as a bulldog, okay? The second one, uh, you sort of should be easy to understand that we mess up with the data, and because there's an implementation problem, we got the program uh, a seg fault. So it's a segmentation fault, so I put a picture there, segmentation fault. Now, to illustrate that when you have a segmentation fault, there's potential consequence you can get, and uh, we use it, uh, we, we modify the uh, photo more, so we put a code, so we, we eventually we achieve the ability to uh, hijack the control flow, so we actually just modify the, the classification, classification result. We can actually let the picture to see anything, okay? Uh, so misclassification in this case, uh, we, we just made the example, say in this case, the text output says flying, flying uh, pig, so you know, we just you know, let it classify as flying pig, but in, uh, in this case, we can make it to you know, say anything, right? Uh, so again, this is a security conference needed to understand. The last one is that, we, uh, so it's basically the same concept, we just simply say, hey, instead of uh, showing you know, a misclassification, we can even give you a shell, and uh, in the worst case, you, you can imagine that if you run this as an uh, internet a service, and potentially attacker can actually compromise your system and steal the data. So I put the picture I own you there, 
Okay, so this is to simply show you, uh, we, you know, there are vulnerability in the system. These are the real application you know we play against, uh, and it didn't take much time. We can actually create these effect. Now, so what really happened? So the reason is that. Most of the uh, deep learning application, at least we look at it, are built over uh, deep learning frameworks. You know, there are many popular deep learning frameworks like TensorFlow, uh, Cafe, Torch, there, there's there at least like 10 of these. And when you see, uh, when you look at the introduction, you know, all the documents related to these frameworks, people tend to emphasize the functionality, flexibility, you know, you, you, they always say, you know, they can do scientific computation, but not many people look into the detail about their, their implementation, and you know, our paper is about the implementation of these uh, frameworks. Uh, to, to explain this in slightly more detail, I want to say that most of the deep learning application you know, we run essentially are building uh, you know, this three layer you know, software, uh, software, uh, software infrastructure. So most of the time we're talking about deep, le deep learning implementation. We're really talking about the top layer. You know, you are using Cafe or TensorFlow to you know to describe how you put layer together, what is you know set up for each layer. You, know, you might have some of the data or the model or the the uh, you know, application you know logic on top, but you're when you really have your software running, you are actually running over like a deep learning frameworks. And these deep learning framework itself also build over a uh, lots of third party uh, packages. And in here in this picture I show like pr uh, Protobuf, OpenCV, Zilip. Uh, just give you an example, like in the early example I use, the Cafe's uh, 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 image classification example, if, you know, if I run LDD over it, I can you know, list all the dependent library, and in, in this particular example it has 137 library. You know. And uh, we, we did a rough, uh, calculation. This is not very scientific, uh, but it gave you a rough idea about the complexity. So these are, uh, and this table shows that for each of the popular framework, for the framework itself, you know, how, how many the lines of code they have and how many packages it depends. I said this is uh, not very scientific because uh, we don't really want to compare the complexity. This is just want to give you a rough idea because these um, uh, platforms are implemented in different languages. Like for example, Cafe, lots of them are using like C++ or C, uh, but TensorFlow is like, you know, there are lots of Python code, so I mean, it's hard to compare the lines of code simply you know, between C and Python. But overall, you can see that most of them have like, you know, more than hundreds uh, K lines of code, and you know, some, of, some of them close to a uh, thousand you know, K, a million lines. And most of them also depend on lots of uh, third-party packages, including the one I, I explained early, like you know, libc, OpenCV, and you know, other other packages. Now, because of this, you know, for people in security, you all know, like, every time you have complexity, it leads to more, you know, potentially security problem, right? So I want to show you again, where are these implementations? Like, very often when I talk to people working on deep learning. They don't feel like they are using all this library, so I'm going to you know, use this picture to show you how we actually where these library being used. So I go to the official Cafe uh, you know web page, and again this is the early Cafe 1.0. This is captured last year. So if you go to the the the, the, the official page, and if you click the implementation, it lead you to like a, like kind of like a GitHub page. And uh, I, I know it's probably hard to, you know, it's hard for you to read, but I try to enlarge part of this. And you can see that, uh, you know, there's, there's include for the Cafe's data layer, that by default they include the OpenCV2, and that's where one of the major libraries being used. And that's also, for the early example uh, I, I demonstrated, is really attacking one of this bug. Uh, again, it's hard for you to read the code, but I'm gonna go through it very quickly, uh, basically, this particular code in the OpenCV library has a, a heap overflow. The reason is that it opened the image and the, 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 there are data reading from the image. And this is what I labeled as external input. And then part of this data being used to control the, uh, the color, temp, uh, color uh, palette. And the, the implementation has an assumption that the palette number is only up to 256. And if you have a larger number in your uh, image metadata, then potentially you can go to a, a heap overflow. Now that 
of course, for that case, if you know that you can create a, a input that causes a heap overflow, it's easy to create a you know denial of service attack. I give an image, then eventually crush the program. And of course, like as I illustrated early, the the problem is not just denial of service. You can even you know cause a system compromise because of that. There are other examples. Now, certainly, the cafes in you know using C or C There's lots of the C library. But even you're using Python, for example, you know, there are other bugs we find that in the, uh, in the TensorFlow case, they are, are there are many of the uh, Python package being used. One of them is called NumPy. This is a really popular scientific, uh, uh, sci scientific supporting uh, library from Python. Uh, the particular bug we find is that in the, one of the loop they try to, you know, processing, uh, they're using, uh, if your input is a list, they're using the length of the list as uh, one of the boundary value for the loop control. But if you gave an empty list, then the loop actually, you know, you end up having an infinite loop. So the result is the following. So we, we took a, uh, we, we find a popular online application that doing a sound classification. This is an application called urban sound classification. And if you gave a wave file, and he sent to it, and this this the application going to classify it. In this particular case, if we have a dog bark, you know, a sound file we send him, and the system, you know, can recognize this as a dog bark. But if we, if we put in a, a, a if we crop a, 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 a sound file with multiple track and with one of the track that has an empty data, then we end up having the system, you know, because it's a non-py has a bug and end up having infinite uh, loop. So this is just. A few examples, we find more bugs you know, just over a summer, this is the list, and I put the list there, you can, you can find all the detail in the paper, and I also put additional paper says, uh, additional picture that simply saying, artificial intelligence is no substitute for natural stupidity. Now here, natural stu stupidity means that if you have, you know, stupid or you know, lazy you know, programmer has bugs in it, right? So to summarize what I, uh, I you know, have here, so, Basically, well, what I want to, want to tell you is that deep learning frameworks really depending on, heavily depending on third party uh, packages. And uh, when you have complexity like this, it usually lead to problem like you know, security vulnerability. And for the security vulnerability in, in these applications, it can lead to misclassification, uh, evasion, denial of service, and system compromise, okay? And that's all I have for today. And I don't know whether I have time for questions. Any questions from the audience? Oh, thank you. <laughs>